The Epic of Gilgamesh has been of interest to Christians ever since its discovery in the mid-19th century in the ruins of the Great Library at Nineveh, with its account of a universal flood with significant parallels to the flood of Noah's Bible flood story. The rest of the epic, which dates back to possibly 3rd millennium BC, contains little of value for Christians, since it concerns typical polytheistic myths associated with the pagan peoples of the time. However, some Christians have studied the ideas of creation and the afterlife presented in the epic. Even secular scholars have recognized the parallels between the Babylonian, Phoenician, and Hebrew accounts, although not all are willing to label the connections as anything more than shared mythology. Keep watching the video for more in-depth details. Firstly we will study the biblical account of the flood story according to Noah. Let's read it as recorded in Genesis chapter 6, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and, behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And, behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Old, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, from under heaven. And everything that is in the earth shall die, but with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee, to Take keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee. And it shall be for food for thee, and for them. Thus did Noah. According to all that God commanded him, so did he. Then chapter 7, 
And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, into the ark, because of the waters of the flood. If you read further to chapter 8, you will see how he used a bird to know when there is dry ground and all of that. There have been numerous flood stories identified from ancient sources scattered around the world. The stories that were discovered on cuneiform tablets, which comprise some of the earliest surviving writing, have obvious similarities. Cuneiform writing was invented by the Sumerians and carried on by the Akkadians. Babylonian and Assyrian are two dialects of the Akkadian, and both contain a flood account. While there are differences between the original Sumerian and later Babylonian and Assyrian flood accounts, many of the similarities are strikingly close to the Genesis flood account. The Babylonian account is the most intact, with only 7 of 205 lines missing. I. T was also the first discovered, making it the most studied of the early flood accounts. The Epic of Gilgamesh is contained on 12 large tablets, and since the original discovery, it has been found on others, as well as having been translated into other early languages. The actual tablets date back to around 650 BC, and are obviously not original since fragments of the flood story have been found on tablets dated around 2000 B.C.8 Linguistic experts believe that the story was composed well before 2000 BC compiled from material that was much older than that date. The Sumerian cuneiform writing has been estimated to go as far back as 3300 BC. Now let's study the story in details, the epic was composed in the form of a poem. The main figure is Gilgamesh, who actually may have been an historical person. The Sumerian king list shows Gilgamesh in the first dynasty of Uruk reigning for 126 years. T. His length of time is not a problem when compared with the age of the pre-flood patriarchs of the Bible. Indeed, after Gilgamesh, the kings lived a normal lifespan as compared with today. The king list is also of interest as it mentions the flood specifically the deluge overthrew the land. The story starts by introducing the deeds of the hero Gilgamesh. He was one who had great knowledge and wisdom, and preserved information of the days before the flood. Gilgamesh wrote on tablets of stone all that he had done, including building the city walls of Uruk and its temple for Iena. He was an oppressive ruler, however, which caused his subjects to cry out to the gods to create a nemesis to cause Gilgamesh strife. After one fight, this nemesis Enkidja became best friends with Gilgamesh. The two set off to win fame by going on many dangerous adventures in which Enkidju is eventually killed. Gilgamesh then determines to find immortality since he now fears death. It is upon this search that he meets Utnapishtim, the character most like the Biblical Noah. 
TikTimbreathe.com. Utnapishtim had become immortal after building a ship to weather the great deluge that destroyed mankind. He brought all of his relatives and all species of creatures aboard the vessel. Utnapishtim released birds to find land, and the ship landed upon a mountain after the flood. The story then ends with tales of Enkidja's visit to the underworld. Even though many similarities exist between the two accounts, there still are serious differences. Let's compare the two accounts and see their similarities and differences. In Genesis the flood was caused by man wickedness but in Gilgamesh it was caused by man's sin. In Genesis it lasted for 40 days and 40 nights but in Gilgamesh it lasted for 6 days and 6 nights. They both release birds to discover when the land is dry, also the character of the two heroes are righteousness. The hero in Genesis was Noah but that of Gilgamesh was Utnapishtim. The two accounts has different birds, in Genesis it was raven and three doves but in Gilgamesh it was dove, swallow and raven. Then in Genesis the ark landed on Mount Ararat but in Gilgamesh it landed on Mount Nisir. Another difference is the hero in Epic of Gilgamesh was rewarded with immortality while that of Bible was granted eternal life. So between these two accounts of the flood story, which do you believe is more convincing to be true? Or don't you believe the world was ever destroyed by this great flood? Please we need your feedback in the comment box. Give the video a thumb up and also share to your social media pages it will be highly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Dance.